Hey, thanks for tuning in to the Ask Amadeus podcast where we bring together issues of humans, homes, and culture, how it all comes together, how it impacts you on the the big level and the small level. If you like this podcast, like, subscribe on iTunes or Spotify or find me on social media at Marcus Amadeus. Have a good one. Today we're going to talk about Zillow Group. It's the giant gorilla in the 500 square foot New York City apartment that really dominates the market of home search. If you've ever looked for a home or you work in the homing industry, you are touched by this company in some way. They had a big earnings beat today. So we're going to go into all deep dive on Zillow and their business practices over the years. It's about a 10 minute podcast. So it's all you need. It's all the time you need. If you don't have 10 minutes, then, then, you know, maybe tune back in later. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Zillow Group just beat earnings in a big, big way. I believe it was $2.19 billion in revenue. Massive, massive beat in expectations. This sent the stock surging about 20% this morning on trading. I think it's, uh, February, yeah, it's February 20th. You know, it, it, a year and a half ago, they had they, the, the stock had come down quite a bit. It's having a huge run. Obviously, the market's running. But this stock in particular, 20% today. And why is that? They're betting on a lot of eye buying, assisting of the buyers to circumvent real estate agents. But today I kind of want to talk about all aspects of Zillow, why it's so important to the market, why it touches everybody, and some of the practices that I think are kind of nefarious and let's say morally flexible. And in the in the end, I don't think it's going to be good to consumers or real estate agents because if you have too much of a not monopoly on a market, it's not good. And uh, this is the case with Zillow. So let's talk about there's a couple aspects that we want to go over. You know, it's got the search engine function functionality. It services real estate agents. We will talk about that second. And then lastly, I want to talk about their, their moves into the home ownership and brokerage aspects of real estate. Okay, so Zillow Group, what is Zillow Group? Zillow Group is the, the largest network of home researching and buying, not buying, but uh, home search platforms. It's pretty much in every single market, at least in America. Um, it dominates everything. I mean, if you, you know, I would say eight out of 10, seven out of 10 people probably just, just default to Zillow or Trulia when they go to their home searches area. Maybe you have realtor or homes.com, but in comparison with the traffic that they get, it's just not even, it's not even close. Okay. So Zillow group is the big company, all right? It's, it's the word Zillow itself has like Amazon or any of these other companies has defined the market, right? So like Google, I mean, a lot of people, when you think about home search, it just goes straight to Zillow. That's, you know, if you ever read the book, 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing, they talk about the tipping point when you are just dominating a market is when you're, when your name is synonymous with the category itself, which I totally believe. So we'll talk a little bit about the whole country, but in New York, Zillow Group owns Zillow, Trulia, and Street Easy. Those are the three biggest home searching tools in in New York. They also own Naked Apartments, which they bought out. They own Zumper, and they own Hot Pads. I don't think they own Rent Hot, but that's a that's pretty much all the search platforms and listing vi- like reliable listing places in New York City. 
actually the inventors of naked apartments i think they got i think they got paid like 10 million dollars and it was like two or three people who who got that site that's just for rentals then they also i mean the, the founders of street easy i think it was 12 people they got paid 50 million dollars and in, you know in retrospect um uh, for zillow it's probably a good a, a good a good deal for them so they own all the search platforms and when so one company owns all the search platforms that means that they are can control the market they control data they control information they and then that creates a pay a pay to play model uh, i don't think a lot of people know this but you know you're as a consumer you are out there searching for homes online it's like 90 percent of your home search at least starts online and then you might move to a real estate agent you might um you, you know go, go to open houses and, and things like that but it starts online so they have the the bottleneck funnel for for all transactions in a area much like much like amazon you know they they bottleneck tons of transactions and Amazon, you know, they not only do they do they, you know, they tra- transact and they they deliver stuff. Sometimes they just fulfill orders, and then they have their own brand. And the reason why I brought like brand name stuff, like I own an Amazon stapler, you know, an Amazon stapler. Anyways, I digress. The reason why I brought that up is because Zillow is very much following the Amazon model of how they kind of sweep swoop sweeped up i don't know about that but they how they took the market so they started out as the number one and number two and then they started buying all little platforms on top of that because you know in a place like new york or like say boston or one any cities you have enough demand to have specific you know sub sub markets of search and that that works you know like uh, New York, the rentals were an issue because of uh, quality control and uh, not having proper listings. And that, that's a problem for the consumer. You know, Zillow comes in and tries to make a better product and they do. And I agree with that. But then they then they squeeze the market. Right. So most people don't know how Zillow makes the majority of their money or at least in the past is they charge for impressions and clicks and contacts from agents mortgage providers i'm pretty sure that's the main two sources is uh, the premier program so just for example if there's a listing you want to go see it you might click on it and sometimes they give it like they don't even give you the option but you have to go through a second box of quote-unquote uh, agent will will uh, contact you instead of the listing agent. When that happens, a lot of real estate agents will buy impressions to become to get in front of you, and then hopefully you know you have good reviews. You have, and this person is reliable, and that's that's great. But sometimes they're not. You just pay for it, right? Like there's there's been certain circumstances where you just get paid to get in front of an agent. They don't actually disclose that agent doesn't disclose how you guys came into contact and then that becomes an issue. But so that's how they make their money. They they have impressions and they sell these impressions. And so you're basically getting a pay for pay for play model. It doesn't really always have to do with merit. And um this is where they they've been getting a lot of conflict from the agents because in the brokerage community because that's the majority of where their clients are. And it's also, if you think about it from a content perspective, it's like uh, saying on a, um, we're basically like the reporters, we're like the content creators and the website itself, for instance, let's just take something like Vice Media. Zillow's like the, the network, the, the network. And then you have independent contributors putting up listings descriptions of buildings like their blogs so basically you know you got a little bit of favorability to come in and re- report about buildings to build the website so they're buying the the progression is they're buying they're buying all these websites they're controlling the whole search market they're then using this to sell this as an advertising product to agents and mortgage brokers i'm sure there's other ones as well 
and you, also on top of that, you know, delivering a service of like organization and like tools for those people for a monthly service. The more you pay, the more leads you can possibly get. They're progressing along. And then once they've cornered the market and then they've made this tool very cheap and effective and word of mouth on the brokerage side, now they start squeezing, right? And then, sorry, what step before is they, they've got enough content to have the tipping point to be the best, to be the best resource because now you, not only do you own the search, you bought all your competitors, you've now made a product to quote unquote content creators and your clients who's paying you. So they're not only building your website for basically for free, giving you traffic so you can sell more ads because, you know, they sell ads, also generic ads for like furniture and stuff and designers. Uh, Now they've cornered the market and they start raising their prices. All their prices get raised up. And now what's happened is that certain people don't want to, now that they've cornered the market and that's their, once you're on their network, it goes through all their networks. And now people don't want to put their content and their listings on these websites because they feel like these brokers or feel like they're getting squeezed. And then that, then that becomes a problem for the market. So now you don't have a transparent market anymore. Certain apartments aren't going up because brokers don't want to spend the money. If you or certain landlords have hundreds of apartments, it's hiding inventory. So it's these apartments might not be available. You might think as a consumer that there's two or three apartments available, but maybe it's in a building with thousands of units and there's actually 20, 30, 40 apartments available, but they don't want to pay to have it online to to show this because they have to pay for it. So they cornered the market. Then they u- then they used all this content to, to build themselves. And now they're kind of switching over to turn on the content creators. So this is kind of where I have, I'm starting to have a problem with them, um, which I don't agree with. I don't think it's the best tactic. Um, but we're going to take a little break for a second here. The second half is why I want to talk about why I think the potentially the the gov the I don't know if it's the um, attorney general should get involved for monopoly purposes based on the second half of this podcast, which we will talk about about their next moves that they made that we have a problem with here. Okay, all right, tune in for the next next half of this episode. I'm just gonna sell you something. Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? Well, this app, Anchor, which you can find on your phone and also works on a desktop browser, is a great way to get your podcast off the ground. It's really simple, straightforward, and I've used other services like Squarespace or hosting it on different platforms. There was, it was a bit more cumbersome, but Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free and it's ridiculously easy to use. And now Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. That's a huge part of being able to do something creative. That means you can get paid to podcast right away. In fact, that's what I'm doing right now by reading this ad. And one of my favorite other parts about Anchor is that it distributes over many platforms. The analytics are really easy to track and it's a good way to socialize and network with people too because they have a discover feature. So go to anchor.fm backslash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters already using the Anchor app. That's anchor.fm backslash start. I can't wait to hear your podcast. Hey, welcome back. You know, sometimes you got to sell ads like we were just talking about Zillow. So that was my anchor ad. Okay. Also, if you need to buy, sell or rent an apartment in New York City or nationwide, give me a call. I'm a real estate agent in New York. We have a net team of industry professionals, handymen, attorneys, mortgage lenders, appraisers, inspectors, you name it for New York and abroad, we will help you out. If it's not in our market, we'll, we'll help you out with someone else and get you set up. So that's that. 
Okay, part two of Zillow. We talked about buying up competitors, right? We talked about building content on the back of your quote unquote clients, charging impressions. Also, a little follow up. I know this is how ads work, but a lot of people complain that impressions were not the best impressions after a while, that the when the program started, it was great, then it turned bad, right? Um, and so now they have the market, they have built the database of content that they needed to totally corner the market, and now they're starting to squeeze their clients slash their real estate agents and whatnot to earn more money. They have a little bit of pushback. Actually, their stock fell quite a bit during this time because stop, people stopped doing the agent premier program. So they started switching up their business model. All right. So now we're going to go bigger picture. All right. Out of New York. In other markets, Zillow has now been buying your home. All right. I think this is a very... Mm, I think this is a, one of the worst the pro, nefarious practices that we that they have because this is what happens in smaller markets they can see basically where like the valves are of what is a good deal what's not a good deal it's closing at this it's listing at this it's closing at that it's going for this so if you get a for sale by owner right in a market that's kind of you know it's it's the price point's low enough um but you know you could still make profits and people want to do quick deals maybe they're in it area where they don't need attorneys or real estate agents as much. When you have a someone who lists every home in the market and now they're going to be the buyers. Now they're sniping deals before they get to the market through their platform which is not, you know, listen, if you can meet your price and Zillow meets your price and that's what you want, fine. That's great. And I actually, you know, that's cool. Quick sale, maybe they pay you cash. That's fine too. But where it comes in is that maybe someone isn't being properly represented. They're not being informed on the market. Maybe they're new to Zillow. Maybe they haven't sold a home in 20 years. That's where the problem comes in. I don't think it's proper that they can be the search platform, be the content creators. Then they have the, the gatekeeping on which content creators get the clients based on a pay to play model. Now they've transitioned into buying and flipping homes on their own as homeowners or and, uh, investors, I should say. So now, now the public, now the general public may be getting not the best deals on their home. I don't think that's a good strategy. Okay. So now we're on to step four. That's, we're saying that's not good. Step four. I have been calling this out for a while, along with other real estate agents. Last week or last month, they, there was a petition in New York to, to, to limit broker fees for rentals, all right? It's a huge market in New York. 70% of the market is rentals. 95% of that is run by brokers, or at least the small walk-ups. So just to let you know, giant giant buildings, you know, they have hundreds of apartments. They have in-staff leasing a lot of times. Sometimes they don't. But small mom-and-pop places that are usually the smaller more affordable apartments, walk-ups, they, most of them, most of them outsource this to real estate agents. There is a word on the street out there that Zillow petitioned or lobbyist working in Zillow's interest made this move for them or incentivize this move under the guise of tenant protections because as you know this year has been one of the biggest law changes under de blasio and cuomo to have tenant protections it's very anti-real estate profession that's a whole nother show we're not going to talk about that right now conveniently after that law or right around right, right around that time zillow is starting to pick up their brokerage license so now They've transitioned not only into a search platform, a content platform, an ad platform for for real estate brokers on top of that, home buyers, so they actually buy and flip homes. Now they're bro- trying to broker deals. Do you think that 
this is a coincidental timing that that law got passed in New York and then Zillow decides that they want to get into the real estate brokerage game. Hmm. I don't think so. Allegedly. We're going to say allegedly just to make it, you know, conspiratorial. Backtrack a couple months. They were, it came out, this is a less reported story, specifically with Street Easy, okay? So the, the one great thing about Street Easy is that they have quality control. They only allow exclusive listings, which means one, say one or two people are allowed to list a renter or a sale, okay? That was fine, but you know, there's thousands of listings that you can't possibly oversee everybody. It's just not possible. From a human perspective, from a uh, computer perspective, I'm sure. So now they started to ask for your client's information. So contacts in the building, copies of your agreements, the whole nine yards to list on the website. And I don't think a lot of people thought about it that much, right? They didn't think it was a big deal. But here's what happened. They now have your contact and they started to subtly contact your clients as a broker to circumvent your service systematically. So they had those contracts. They started building relationships with your clients. They lobby, supposedly, allegedly, to get this passed under tenant protections. Do you think that our government would pass it so quickly without some sort of uh, lobbying help? I'll let you decide. On top of that, now they're getting their brokerage license and they're trying to facilitate the brokerage license. All right. That think think about how vertically integrated that business is. And the reason why it's a little different from things like Amazon who do things like who have also been accused of say you list on it and you make a stapler contacting your stapler supplier and being like, "Hey, this is the thing that sells the best." The difference is is because housing you need housing. You don't need staplers. All right. You need housing. You need affordable housing. You can't have someone with that big wrench on the the market in general. All right. So now they're trying to be a nationwide brokerage firm, which is in the process of happening. It's a little hard because each state has different laws, but that's the goal. And then finally, you know, they beat earning expectations because now they're using their iBuyer tool along with their brokerage tool to, to, to legally allow to do that, using the iBrokerage to give you refunds or low, lower cost on your buyer transaction. They're sniping their own properties on top of that because they're first to the market and they're buying them and they're flipping them and then they control the search. Does that not seem like an issue or a problem that's going to be huge soon? They recognize that the there is a giant home crisis around the country of affordability. Builders can't build fast enough. Big, big cities, mostly, I don't want to get too much into politics, but mostly ones that are run by over legislative democratic left-leaning cities like New York and LA that don't let them build fast enough. And now you have the biggest player in the room totally vertically integrated on all aspects of this market. Where is, where do you go from here? That's the, that's the issue. And then they're also meddling, allegedly meddling in lobbying to change laws to benefit them. So this is some big news. And obviously this comes, this comes off. Like I think I started out the episode, this comes off the heels of a giant 20% raise in their stock today, albeit that, the, you know, the last couple of years they did come down a little bit, but 20% is a lot in one day and a $2.19 billion revenue beat. Huge, huge. So where does this go from here? I think I really do. I don't like government legislation, but sometimes when it goes into my pocket, I like it, you know, pick and choose your battles. I'm not perfect. There needs to be some oversight on these businesses because when they vertically integrate like this, it's not good for the consumer. It's not good for small businesses that need the, the, these, these jobs. I mean, you think the, the retail 
do you think the retail and um, distribution, you know, disruption through Amazon was was big? Just wait till it hits the housing industry. Just wait till it goes into appraisers, contractors, and then the whole nine yards. It's going to be a mess. So you need competition. You need small business. You need big business as well to make new uh, innovations and, and innovate the market, but you also need small competitors and medium sized competitors. Otherwise it's going to be really bad for the end consumer and the citizen at the end. And that's the whole point of it, right? We're trying to, you know, at least what I do through real estate. And then I'm talking on this podcast and my YouTube is I want to educate people on the housing industry because you don't have a choice. You have to live somewhere unless you just want to like live, I mean, you don't want to be homeless, but some people choose to live in like the tropics outside. It's possible. But my point is you need to understand about how these markets move, how to get good apartments, understand how the law, the law works for your favor and not for your favor. So that's why you should tune in all the time to my podcast, Ask Amadeus. Enjoy it. You'll have a great time every single time you can talk to me. Every Sunday, we have sales, open houses. If you want to see anything, let me know. Go on my Instagram for the links to my podcast. We have YouTube at Marcus Amadeus. And then also we put together weekend open house collections for sales uh, in New York. Give me a call. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye.